Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. What I would really like to see is both the Chronicles of Illyria type approach. So we basically, we've got the ultimate simulator game that I talked about previously. And then we've also got the um, fantasy, the ultimate fantasy game, which essentially is Chronicles of Illyria. That is the ultimate fantasy game. The ideas behind it. Not all of the ideas. You know, I think it could use some balancing ideas there. But, um, yeah, the, the, the general ideas behind it where everything I said about the uh, ultimate simulator game where the players fill all different roles, the restaurants, the, the barber, the transport, the all the logistics, the farming, everything. This is all in Chronicles of Valyria, and Chronicles of Valyria went one further. It was all manufacturing as well. So you'd have blacksmiths, carpenters, um, wheelwrights, all of it. Like it, it was all stuff that would be made and created by the players in game. And oh, like the, this is the kind of essentially the ultimate sim but the fantasy version and this is definitely something that I would want to play if that game had been made yeah I would love to play that game that would be fantastic I feel that it would need balances though in order to make it work better than the initial ideas that have been put forward with the Chronicles of Illyria type thing but I think that it could have worked I think that there is a massive potential for it but the one thing that I feel that would improve both versions of these games is the ability to play it in a VR situation now I've been lucky enough lately to well my son has got a VR headset it's a next gen one this is one of the latest generation VR headset and it's really good. Like the graphics, the last time I tried a VR headset, the graphics were terrible. Now the graphics are absolutely amazing on it, and you look around the interaction and that that you're doing with it, it is really, really good. Now I don't know if any of you have seen Ready Player One, which is the. I think it's Ready Player One. I'm sure it's Ready Player One. You know, basically, where there is just a massive, great, big virtual world, and everybody goes into it. And they have these suits that the haptic suits, so that they can get a, a, they can like physically feel something that happens in the game. So if you get hit in game, then you feel a shock on your suits. I mean that seemed absolutely amazing. Um, and then they also had the platforms where they could move around and run on. So you. Basically, you just had a ring that you put around you, and then you had a moving floor underneath you that could move in any direction. So you could run on the spot because of the moving floor. You could walk, you could run, um, you, you could move around however you wanted to, and you'd be moving in the game as well. So if you're walking in real life, you're walking in the game. So you do actually do the actions in game that you do in real life as well and that was part of the thing that I really liked about the whole Ready Player One and we are pretty close now with the whole VR stuff that we've got to having that. So essentially what you can have, you've got the ultimate sim, I'm driving the tractor right here, I would just need a, well I've got my steering wheel and seat and everything all set up, I just put on my VR headset and I can, I'm sitting in the cab of the tractor. You know, I don't have to be running around for everything. For this particular job, I'm doing a lot of sitting down. So I could be sitting down, I could be driving my tractor around. And that, I, I mean, I, I, I really, genuinely, I've seen that film probably a dozen times now. And I still don't get fed up with it. And I could watch it another dozen times and I still wouldn't get fed up with it. And that's what I would like to see. That is my dream. Is essentially the ultimate simulator game that I've talked about combined with VR and also the ultimate RPG game where you know it's kind of like the whole Chronicles of Illyria ideas everything is built and manufactured in the game and 
Um, it's all, you know, the full fantasy setting, everything like that. It would be absolutely fantastic. It would be amazing. So, you the whole Ready Player One thing. You, you go into a big lobby, and then you can go and play whichever game you want. So, you can go and spend a bit of time doing the Ultimate VR uh, simulator game. You could go and spend a bit of time doing the Ultimate Fantasy game. You, whichever one you like. Whatever takes your fancy. You don't have to tie yourself down to anyone in particular. You can chop and change between the two. You can dedicate yourself entirely to just one. That, I think, would be amazing. That, I think, is the real future of gaming as well. Having seen some of the stuff that's available with the VR games, um, I haven't played very many of them yet. It's just like some of the older titles that came out when VR was first really being pushed, like Job Simulator. And little games like that, they're really, really good. I've uh, just tried out a roller coaster simulator. Um, and much to the amusement of my children, when the roller coaster's moving, I'm wanting to move as well to like correct myself. So I was kind of staggering around the kitchen a little bit because of the whole movement right in front of my eyes. And I mean, it was absolutely brilliant, it worked really well. But I needed to put a chair in front of me, and I, I could have sat down. I could have like started it all again and done it so it was sitting down. But um, you, you basically got to reprogram the thing to a new height and that, so you stay standing. Once I put a chair in front of me, and I was just holding the chair so I could sort of steady myself, and my eyes weren't telling me that I had to be ducking and weaving all over the place. It was a lot better. I was actually able to enjoy it a bit more, but up until that point, really genuinely thought I was going to fall over. I mean, the whole sensation of it is really, and uh, the audio on it is really crisp and clear as well. So, generally speaking, it was a really good experience. And I haven't used it very much. My kids use it quite a bit. They, they, they really enjoy doing that. Um, but. Yeah, I could see VR definitely taking up quite a spot in the future of gaming. How much does depend on how much game developers want to push it. Because as many of us know, game developers, they've got to produce the games in order for the consoles to actually come up with anything useful. Okay, so at the moment we've got 1% compaction in here. I think we're going to have to go and get our roller. We've got 360,000 litres of chaff in here. I think we are going to want to go and get the roller because this is going to be a tedious old task. How is it still only 1%? I really thought that it would be more compact than this. Now tell me that this thing is bugged and it's not able to go below 1%, uh, above 1%. If it is bugged, I am going to be well annoyed. Have we lost chaff here somewhere? 360,000, say, at the moment. Right, we haven't lost chaff. Oh, now it's 2% compacted. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so we're going to drive back to the yard. We're going to unhitch the trailer right there. Uh, let's get rid of that. And we're going to get the roller. And we will roll the clamp using that one because just using the tractor on its own is going to take way too long. That is definitely not going to work. Um... Uh, yeah, has, has anybody here tried a VR headset? Have, have you seen what they're like? Um, I think with more titles, it could be quite interesting. I genuinely think that it could be quite cool to play Farming Simulator with a VR headset. Like if you, not just a, a standard steering wheel, if you could have a steering wheel that was sort of a bit more, you know, maybe a cab layout, a bit more like that. So you've got levers on your sides and stuff like that for controlling your tractor. I think that could be very cool. I think that's something that could actually work and work quite well. Take a little bit of time to get it set up, I think. Um, 
you know, get used to it and that, and you'd have to sort of set up your your own sort of workstation place that you were going to do it with. But I think that could, I think it could work. I think it could actually do something very, very awesome there. Now, I'm going to go and get this roller, and we're going to go and roll the clamp. I am wondering if maybe we should take another load of silage over to the BGA as well. I want to plow this field, and now is the time to do it. We don't currently have a plow, so we'd need to buy a plow. We've got a seed drill, so we can plant this whole area. That's not a problem. Uh, I was previously talking about having... Uh, doing a, a few root crops here, maybe doing a small section with root crops. We don't have the ability to do much in the way of root crops at the moment mainly because of the fact that the small potato harvesters we can't use them like i mean well technically we can use them but the problem with the small potato harvesters is you can't use the hired help on them there's um we've got the the, the really small range of stuff not in there in here uh, if we go to Tatey Poe Technology right here, we've got that Grim Pack right there. Uh, collects potatoes that are put on the ground. So you've got one, two, and three. It picks them up, puts them, basically harvests the potatoes and leaves them on the ground. And then once you've done that, you go along with this one and you pick them up off the ground. And then they get stored in the 6,800 litre tank and then you offload them. You can't use that with hired help. I mean, it does cost 88000 as well. But you can't do it with hired help, which to me is a problem. I don't want to be doing this if I can't do it if I'm not able to use the hired help. So I'm not really interested in doing that. We do have these two as options. This one right here would need the home cutter to go through first. Uh, this has 9,200 litre capacity. This one's got a 10,000 litre capacity and you don't need that one first. So basically the Keeler 2 is exactly the same price as this one. This one requires two passes with a tractor. This one just requires one pass. So this would be the machine that we would go for. If we're going to do potatoes, we would do it with that one right there. At 160,000. We could plant with these small ones if we wanted to. We could do the planting with one of these. Take a while, but we could do that. that that's not a problem. Uh, or we can go with the sugar beet over here. Now, this is all just sugar beet headers for the big self-propelled harvesters, so that none of those count. You got that one right there. Uh, home topper is needed prior to this machine. Now, that goes directly behind the tractor, so you should put this one on the front of the tractor and that one on the back. And then this one goes along and it uh, harvests, and when it's got 6,000 litres in it, then you go along and you empty it out. This might be a better option. That's 100,000. I mean, that one is 22. So it's 120,000 for that combination, whereas the potato combination is 160,000. So it's a fair bit more for the potatoes. Either way, it's an expensive thing to get into. Now, we can make quite a bit of money once we do get into it, and we know that we can make quite a bit of money once we do get into it, but it's getting there that's going to be the problem. So, how are we going to do it? I mean, people were saying that, you know, I could divide this field in half. If I was to just cut off that sort of dog leg of the field there and then have this bit up here this really long bit here we could just keep this piece and have that for general work for the farm um, or maybe keep that on grass and then have the short piece down there for root crops or something like that so that's a possibility we, we could definitely take a look at doing that whether or not we actually do do that is another matter not quite sure yet it really made my mind up so um, I want to get this silage done and then we'll go and look at some of the other possibilities that we can do after that. There is that one job as well. We, oh, we've actually got uh, two sowing jobs, cultivating job and a small fertilizer job to do as well. So we're going to possibly have a look at this 20 past four now. I think maybe we'll focus on doing the silage. 
uh, doing this silage and then moving a few more loads of silage from our clamp up to here if we sort of focus on that first and then the jobs that are coming up we might leave those until tomorrow do some of them how are you going to cope with this so we're on two percent at the moment let's not smash the wall so we want to lower that one down like that and we can start reversing up across this clamp and see how quickly we can start to roll I think I've possibly just put it too thick with that two percent there three percent now it is going it's definitely going faster now that we've got this roller engaged he says I'm hoping it's going to go faster there we go it's getting stuck up on the top all right well I said it's definitely going faster I'm now not quite so convinced that it's definitely going faster it's you know, it's now on to four this this is this is gonna take a while isn't it I mean there is the the usual type of approach that you just start it from down the bottom down here because you don't actually have to be rolling the clamp itself but one thing that I did want to do is physically roll it down a bit using the wheels like spread out the chaff because I actually like that you can do that so if we can move this around a little bit like this push that back right and on back a little bit more so has anybody like have any of you seen the film ready player one um, you know what let me just make sure that i am talking about the right one because if i'm not it's gonna be really embarrassing because i've been rapting on about it being that film yes it is that film it is ready player one and that is the film that i really like i thought it was i, I, I why I always sort of do, do that though I, I have something something right and then I second guess myself and I persuade myself that I've managed to get it wrong and I talk myself out of the right answer um, but anyway so yeah have any of you seen the film those of you who have what do you think of it I know that for some it's, it's definitely not uh, sort of the, the, the it's, it's very sort of a, a meh film but me personally I absolutely love it the ideas that that game puts forward um, for th that game, the ideas that that film puts forward for the future of gaming are just amazing. I absolutely love it. And I could genuinely see gaming going that way fairly soon. I mean, I don't know how soon. I don't know how many years it would take to kind of develop the technology sufficiently that we could do that because it's not just the actual physical technology it's the digital kind of thing as well you know the, the big lobby where everybody goes into all different games it's then having the world where all the games are connected up to because there was in there uh, Minecraft was definitely mentioned in there whether it was physically mentioned or whether it was just you know there was a, a um just a, a picture of minecraft in there somewhere i'm absolutely certain that i seen minecraft in that game somewhere and so they're essentially saying that you'd be able to go into minecraft and you could do that game rather than just you know clicking with the mouse the way that you do now looking at the screen you'd be in there in the game yourself so you would be I guess swinging your pick, digging with your shovel, doing all of the stuff that you do in Minecraft, just doing it with VR and full-on hand actions, which that'd be pretty cool, actually. I've got to admit that that would be a, a pretty cool thing to be able to go and do. Um, but you'd have to then have a gaming platform where everybody could join together, and we all know that Xbox, Microsoft, and Sony are notorious for not wanting to have any cross-platform types of games. They don't like the idea of cross-platform. 
It has accidentally happened a couple of times on some games, but they both very, very quickly put a stop to it. They do not like players on Xbox being able to do something with players on PlayStation. Now, I'm certain that there are some games where you can actually do it, but I don't know of any off the top of my head. I'm... I'm because I'm not a console player, I don't really know what goes on with the consoles. I sort of don't keep up with um, a lot of what happens on them. Um, I don't even know with Farming Simulator. Are you a, is, is cross-platform available on Farming Simulator? If one of you is on a PlayStation, can you join a world that someone else has on Xbox or vice versa. Is that something that you can do or not in Farming Simulator? I'm sure there are some games where it's possible. But anyway, it would require quite a bit of working together on the part of the software companies and also the hardware companies in order to make something like that work. And these companies don't generally play well together, do they? Well, it's now five o'clock in the evening, just about, and looking at the list, I've got a few new fertilizing jobs, there's also some sewing jobs and cultivating jobs, and I'm kind of thinking that it's a little bit late in the day to be starting up new jobs, although the fertilizer ones, I'm actually tempted to take these, because I reckon that we can finish them before we've even finished doing this. So that's four, six, and twenty-five. For those, 25 is obviously up there, and then 4 is there, and 6 is there, so the, they're not actually, like, all three of them are fairly close, well, they're, 6 isn't, but 4 and 25 at least aren't all that far away from us, so, like, we, we've got that option, so I reckon if we take those three jobs... Uh, the sewing jobs and the cultivating jobs, I'm going to leave those. I mean, the sewing jobs, they can make us a bit of money, but we've still obviously got to go and buy seed and stuff, and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to accept contract on the three fertilizer jobs, and I'll leave the other two right there. There's canola and soybean jobs right there. I will take the ridgy track. We'll get that one hooked on to our fertilizer spreader once again. And then we can get these going out on the field. So I've got 1,800 leads of fertilizer at the moment. I'm going to go straight up across our field here. And I'm going to get started on field 25. We may have to swing by the shop after this one. And get a little bit of fertilizer so that we can then carry on. Um, I would like to also take some more silage over to the BGA before we finish up for the night, but well, I'm sort of thinking that we won't put that down as a priority at the moment. We'll focus mostly on just getting that silage clamp rolled and getting these fertilizer jobs done. So we're just going to go straight across here. The farmer really won't mind if we take a shortcut in through there. Trust me, he really won't. He'd be quite happy with us to do that. And I'm going to go about there, I think. Is that going to... Stopped work unexpectedly, field not owned. Well, I know that that's not actually true. Okay, so you go off up across there. We could end up with some difficulty there. We're getting all of that one properly done. I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. And we're going to keep doing the rolling of the clamp right here. It's very important that we get this done. Um, so I've spent a couple of weeks worth of recordings now talking about the Ultimate Simulator game. And I've heard a few of you now, I've seen some comments coming back from the, the very first time I was talking about it. I'm getting a bit ahead on my recordings because I've got something coming up. Um in another month's time which I could potentially have to take a good couple of weeks off for so I'm making sure I've got plenty done just in case this is kind of an in case thing more than anything else um so yeah I've, I, I've, I've gotten a few comments back a little bit of feedback about what you sort of think would be good uh, for a simulator a lot of you really really like the idea of 
the ultimate simulator game i haven't had any feedback yet on the sort of the rpg version of the ultimate simulator that i was talking about but i mean some of the comments about the actual simulator that i was uh, discussing and what might be available in such a game and what could be done were quite interesting um some of you particularly like the idea of um like the player run economy and things like that and several of you were talking about um like every aspect of vehicle and um well vehicle control vehicle maintenance vehicle production and everything like that so uh, there was talk about uh, factories being made so that stuff could be created from scratch so you haven't just got garages to maintain trucks tractors um one or two of you pointed out that well if you're going to go with the ultimate sim then you definitely want to be running the trains and stuff like that so you'd also have to have railway maintenance crews and and so on so there'd be those bits and something i did forget about was well i didn't talk about not only would you have shops that people would actually run and i mean i did talk about why would you have a restaurant in a game what would be the point in eating in a game and i suggested that you know maybe the eating could provide buffs or something like that which several of you did seem to like the idea of if the restaurants were providing you with a 24-hour buff or a, a one-week buff then it would be worth going and spending some of your money that you're earning on a meal out at a restaurant because then it gives you a buff for a week um maybe it increases your earning potential so any money that you earn you increase that by say 10 percent if you've gone and eaten a, eaten a certain meal at a restaurant um in the previous week uh there could be another one where i don't know you get extra from making deliveries you're, you're physically stronger something like that so i haven't actually talked about what your physical attributes would be because i'm mostly focused on like uh, running vehicles and that but maybe some part of it would also be not just running the vehicles but also what you can physically do yourself so like, certain jobs wouldn't require vehicles they would require physical strength um and so you wouldn't just have farms growing food for restaurants and stuff you'd also have people like running greenhouses and things like that you'd have building companies who, who would be able to you know build houses someone was saying about building houses trains was a big one a lot of people talked about trains i did mention trains briefly and that you know trains you you would run them but i didn't get into them in any big way so i was kind of thinking that well yeah like I, I guess kind of all of that stuff would go hand in hand and the limit I suppose if you were gonna have more trains and uh, airplanes and stuff like that is would you when it comes to like building new tracks would you build new tracks would the players decide to build a new railway line or would railway lines be free Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.